Back with the new uh, Britain campaign in Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Uh, in our last episode, we saw the first couple of uh, battles of the war. Uh, one of our armored cruisers, the Cochrane, fended off a uh, pretty large destroyer ambush. Didn't sink anything, but took very, very light damage and did a good job fending off the, you know, uh, driving off the destroyers. So that was a small but uh, a welcome victory. And then our one battlecruiser met one of their three battlecruisers in a one versus one duel. And uh, pretty good in intelligence gained from that because we learned that our battlecruiser is dreadfully slow. Uh, but so is theirs. They're both 23 not uh, slow battlecruisers. Uh, we found out that... Uh, our battlecruiser is substantially better armed with 12-inch guns versus the Germans' 10-inch. We also learned, however, that uh, our battlecruiser design is prone to flash fires. She suffered two during that fight and very, very nearly sank herself. It was a race to see who got to zero structure first right at the tail end and because of that Achilles is out of the fight for eight months repairing costing over a million per month without contributing uh, anything to the point I'm almost tempted to scrap it but uh, not going to I am interested let's, I, I want to take a closer look at that battlecruiser design to see if I, I didn't really notice before why but see if we can pick out why uh, she was uh, prone to the flash fires well the shell charge being Dunite is one reason that's a pretty big bump in flash fire chance. She's using cordite propellant. That's a pretty big bump in flash fire chance. That doesn't affect anything. That doesn't. Just standard shell uh, amount of ammo, which increases ammo debt a little bit. No, that's, that's a separate thing. That's not a flash fire. Okay, so it's the combination of these two, the propellant charge and the shell charge, with the fact that her barbette protection is on the low side. Um... You know, it's at minus 7.5% chance versus a plus 35 and another plus 35. So, you know, 35 plus 35, 70 minus 7.5, still over a 60% chance, in, increased chance of a flash whenever the turret gets hit. I hadn't picked up on that earlier. Yeah, we'll not. I'm going to go ahead and keep this one for. But we're not going to build. I'm not going to build anymore. Actually. If I really wanted to pursue a, a battle cruiser heavy solution. A composition and have multiple battle cruisers. Um, I would design a new one and I'd start building them now. As it is, in capital ships, we have a 10 to 5 uh, battleship superiority and overall 11 to now 7. If we lose this battle cruiser, 
I think we'll have to see how they perform in battle, but I think I would rather build more battleships. If I mean, the battleships are faster than the battlecruiser is. The primary thing this thing is supposed to bring to the fight, it doesn't have. And we have this flash fire vulnerability. So I'll uh, go ahead and keep just the one, but uh, I'm not going to build any more of her. I'm not going to introduce another battle cruiser design for now. Before I say that, let's make sure that the battleship does not have a similar vulnerability. White powder, okay. Much less, uh, yeah, that's better. That's not better. I'm not a big fan of the picric acid. Okay, so the picric acid is a concern. However, the white powder is much less volatile and uh, we're getting a little bit more barbette thickness. Forty plus seven point five, so forty-seven point five minus twelve point five gives us. So the battle cruiser has uh, like a sixty-two percent chance, increased chance of flash fire, whereas the battleship has more like about a forty percent increased chance. Oh no, we, it also has extra ammo. This, this battleship may be just as bad, or almost as bad. Hmm. But if I'm going to do a capital ship to replace one or both of these, I would go with a battleship design, not a battle cruiser design. So I'm going to keep this for now. See how the battleship does in combat. Enough of that. Meanwhile, uh, some of our cruisers have happened upon a comp. Somehow they decided to go all the way around uh, Denmark and go into <laughs> this area without being detected, I guess, or intercepted. And they found a convoy. And they're going to see if they can sink 11 transports before this battle cruiser sinks them. The R in these uh, convoy uh, battles, that means reinforcing. And that means that this battle cruiser is some distance away from the convoy. It's quite possible that we will be able to sink all the merchants before the Lutzau really makes her presence felt. Let's see if it works out that way. And we are already in sight. these transports. Let's go over and get rid of them all before the battle cruiser shows up. Even when she does, we know from the last fight that the German battle cruiser has only 10 inch guns, which no doubt will hurt these armored cruisers. She's going to have to get a little bit closer, and she won't have quite as good accuracy as she might have had. It won't do quite as much damage per hit. It's going to lower down to cruise speed and uh, improve our accuracy just a little bit while we're firing at these merchants. I'm liking that one the same. That little crews aren't doing a bang up job. Of this. There 
There's Lutel. Heavy cruisers do not have the ability to generate a smoke screen. There we go. Okay, let's get this guy. Actually, let's spread the fire out a little bit. Amphitrite, Amphitrite. Hit the brims, have up here, shoot the veneta. Horn walls, they know this guy. Okay, shoot the loot cell with your uh, mains, however, let's get secondaries on the phone. Soup around in the other direction. I want to close distance and just turn around outboard. Let them shoot uh, their main 8 inch guns toward the uh, loot cell. Keep secondaries on transports, which is only one. Well, I'm going to chase these down over here. Okay. Everybody. Let's get these last two transports. Everybody, HE. The AP will just overpin the thin transports anyway. You won't get any more damage out of AP. It's that kind of target. We'll speed up time a little bit. We are not going to penetrate uh, the battleships uh, or the battle cruiser's armor, but we'll pepper her with a whole bunch of HE. She's too close, I can't ignore her. Everybody just. damage on it. We're not ricocheting, just the armor's just blocking the HE, causing the shells to break up. And not do much. that way though. So maybe we can kind of loop around this way and catch sight of that transport before we run for real. Gosh, it's 
blocking everything. I should be getting at least a few little partial pins. Let's see. Harassment damage, at least. In Prite, her has got conning tower damage that's greatly affecting her accuracy. Yeah, minus 25% conning tower damage. Abukir and uh, Cornwall have got a little bit better accuracy. There's a part of that. Zach is terrible. <laughs> Frankly, so so is the loot cells. <laughs> We've taken a few smacks, but it could be a lot worse. Out of that transport yet, though. See, the, the condition for victory is to kill 100% of the, the transports. We're at 82%. I only saw the one, so we should be at like 91%. So apparently there's two we missed. We still need to kill. Eggs are right now, the game will count this as a defeat, despite the fact we sink 9 out of the 11 transports. Which is kind of garbage. They need to. And I am not sure that in these conflicts, oh, there's another flash fire. good news is Cornwall didn't lose a whole a bunch of speed. She's lost a good bit. She's still above 20 knots. And Lutzal is kind of focused on the other two. So she's slower, but if she can kind of go off in a different direction, then Lutzal doesn't pay any attention to her. And these two need to keep them at least a little bit closer to Lutzal so she doesn't shift fire to the closest target. Uh, 
Cornwall a little bit. Zigzag a little bit because our maneuvering will help throw off Luke's uh, gunfire control solution. So you have these modifiers over here for own maneuver and also for the opposing ship's maneuver. See, so target maneuver 24%, uh, 30% because of Abakir's maneuvering. Alright, we got the end battle screen. Disengage. Yeah, defeat, and uh, because, you know, the, the thousands of damage, you know, like Cornwall did, 2.7k, Amphitrite, Amph Amphitrite, I think that would be, uh, 4.8k, Abukir, 3.8k. That was all against transports, though, and that doesn't really count that for your victory points, which is why we only got three victory points, whereas the damage that Lutzal did on our three cruisers... She got 25 victory points for that. And, yeah, we did sink all but one. 10 out of 11. And we came out with uh, light damage. It might turn out to be medium on Cornwall, but I don't think so. It'll probably be light. Showing green. Objectively, this should be a victory. It isn't. However, that is 10 transports that Britain lost that should have an economic impact on their transport percentage. Right here. You know, they just lost 10 transports, so I hope, we can't see it, but I hope that, uh, not British, the German uh, transport percentage has been deemed down below 100%. Whether or not that's actually happening in the game, I don't know. But I, I play as if it does. And if it doesn't, well, hopefully that is corrected at some point in the future. Okay, I didn't actually look at, uh, let's see. Two months for Cornwall, one month for Abakir, two months for Amphitrite. Not terrible, um, and they're costing a half a mil a piece each month they are in. And we get one of these back next month and the next two back two months after. Certainly a lot better than Achilles. Oh, we have a bunch of ships in sea control. I did not realize that the autogen fleet would do that. I want everything in being. So what does that do? In being means the fleet, you know, the ship is there. It's not in mothballs, but it is mostly staying in port. It's mostly, you know, it's there as a potential threat. It exists, it's operational. Therefore, the enemy has to uh, account for that. Sea control means it's kind of converting that potential threat into kinetic threat in that it's out at sea a lot more and farther out, um, being more active. That doesn't mean the in-being ships are completely inactive, but sea control is far more active, you know, a higher op tempo, operational tempo. Because of that, um, sea control is more expensive, right? The ship at sea is burning up more gas, more fuel, or, you know, uh, more food uh, than it, it does spending more time in port. Uh, it adds 50% cost. 
this destroyer is 163,000 per month in sea control and a little over 100,000 a month in in being in being ships still find their way into battles and so it's you know they're not completely inactive and because it costs less I'm keeping most of the fleet in in being since we're you know building more ships and we'll be building more after this and just keeps us financially uh, on a better footing in game terms when you put them in sea control the idea is that that ship is more likely to be pulled into battles and the help here we'll just look at it mm, where is that Well, I don't remember where. I don't remember where it is, but sea control notionally means that the ship will be in more battles and will often be in a more advantageous position right you know more ships on your side than on their side I'm not convinced that, that really happens quite as much as uh, maybe the developers intend <clears throat> it's certainly not worth spending 50% more on maintenance costs uh, per month so unlike a lot of people in YouTube comments and forums and everything. I generally keep most of my ships in being most of the time. Right. The other thing that's going on is we do have a few ships from the initial setup that are not in the North Sea. And I would prefer all of my ships to be in the North Sea area because that's where the uh, balance of uh, tonnage is calculated for purposes of transport losses. So a few ships here in Liverpool. I've got plenty of room in Rosseth. Let's move these ships over to Rosseth. A couple in Barry. It's one in Plymouth. It's repairing well, can't move. Okay. Uh, after a battle, the game it likes to send ships back to Liverpool, Barry, and these channel ports. Or at least Portsmouth and Plymouth. Uh, it typically does not send ships back to Belfast, Dublin, and Cork. At least I don't recall ever seeing it. But from, and I don't remember if Dover counts as an English Channel or a North Sea port. I think English Channel. By and large, these five ports over here on the East Coast is where you want your fleet. And Scapa Flow and Rosith, and to some extent Sunderland, are where the capacity is. Uh, Hull and Yarmouth typically have less capacity, and they're full now. The ships that are there are fine where they are. We just I just can't really put any more ships in them. Okay, we got ships moving, we got ships repairing. We're done with February. Okay, the ships have moved. No battles cropped up during this month. The Germans did lay down a bunch of new ships. There's a destroyer. A light cruiser, a heavy cruiser, another destroyer. Then, after losing that last battle cruiser, they've laid down a new battle cruiser. And they are researching. Uh, they, matter of fact, they're researching that same exact thing. Six centerline turrets. Well, 
I am fine if they discover that and try to use it because that ship is going to be awfully unstable and not shoot very well. And then some other messages have scrolled off the bottom. Looks like they've completed repairs on at least one, probably most of, if not all, of the destroyers from that ambush battle last month. Right. Um, it has been two months, so... Let's get a couple more of these uh, Nottingham-class cruisers uh, starting to build. Now uh, we've got four building, and four still suspended, and they'll gradually uh, shuttle those in. Completed repair of Amphitrite and Cornwall. And where are they? One with them. One of them was in Plymouth. Let's get him moved up to Rosyth. Get her moved up to Rosyth. Okay. On to June. There we go. Germany lost three transports in Sea Region North Sea. All right. I've never seen one of those messages for any sea area other than the North Sea. Uh, I've never seen one for the Baltic, for the English Channel, for the Irish Sea. It's all here. That's why I want all the operational ships in the North Sea ports. <clears throat> and it's been another couple of months. I think we can get two more of these Nottingham's building. The Germans have laid down more ships, another light cruiser, another armored cruiser, another battleship, uh, another destroyer, and uh, another CA. The AI lays down a lot of ships. Whether they actually get to complete these ships is another matter entirely. They will a lot of times you'll see ships laid down that you never see a completion message for. And then other times you'll see completion messages, you know, finish construction of X ship. But you don't see the numbers up here increase to reflect that. Sometimes they do. A lot of times they don't. And that all has to do with the budget management. as the a you know the ai has to juggle these sliders too and keep a positive uh naval funds and a positive monthly balance and if they're in the red uh you know they may suspend the construction of some of these ships they lay down or when the ship completes they may mothball it mothball occurs when you don't get rid of the ship but you set the crew to zero, ship will be mothballed. And it'll, instead of normal, it'll appear gray, mothballed. Okay? Now, the, the cost will go way, way, way down. I think to maybe like 10 or even 5%. It's really low. And the ship is still there, but if you want to bring it back, then you got to recrew it. There is a, you know, but it's not like kind of, you know, free cheap ship and you just bring it back when you need it. When you moth, and why I'm not hitting okay here is because when you do mothball it, it resets the crew back down to zero for, you know, back down to cadet status. So we haven't been training all that long, but if I were to hit okay now and then set crew again and put it back up to full, uh, whatever training that St. Vincent has done over the past uh, six months, I think we're at, will be wiped out, right? So, let me cancel that. But if they don't have the, uh, if they don't have the funds, I suspect that 
the AI may complete chips and then just straight mothball them. Not always. Sometimes they add chips, especially if you're playing Germany and you're playing against Britain and they have not as much money problems. And what is, yeah, see, St. Vincent's up to trained. You know, that's an, ex you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take the risk because I've never actually done it to uh, confirm. It's Mothball Vincent. And then let's remanner completely. Okay. Dropped her down to green. I took all those guys off Vincent just now when I mothballed it. This crew pool, when you scrap ships and their crews come off or you mothball them, I've suspected this, I wasn't really sure, but that kind of supports the idea that these guys coming in are cadet, your extra 319 that come in every month, right? But this crew pool is, is kind of averages out. And so if you have experienced sailors coming off old ships or mothballed ships, and let's say that they are seasoned level, that seasoned will average in here. And so when I took the crew off of St. Vincent, this crew pool got bigger, but it also averaged out all the newbies with the trained crew that were in St. Vincent. And the average quality of this crew pool, I guess, became green, and that's why she's green as we manned her back up. I've, I've been kind of thinking that's what was happening. And that, that kind of helps uh, reinforce that interpretation. Okay, there's one battle this month, and it looks like it's going to be a cruiser against a cruiser, armored cruisers. Our Europa against the first Bismarck. And the first thing, before even going in, we can see that the German armored cruiser is significantly lighter tonnage than ours by over a thousand tons. We'll be t able to tell more about her soon. Worth noting though, we you know, our cruisers do not have torpedoes. Oh, wait a minute. I guess it's over here. Smoke to the north. It already wants to run away. <clears throat> At the beginning of a battle when you don't have radar and RDF, one way to kind of tell which way to go is you just click it on AI real fast, and usually the AI will head toward the enemy. In this case, the AI already wants to run away. That's kind of an indicator that, you know, the AI knows something we don't. <laughs> Let's go find this thing. It's night. It's cloudy. The wind and waves are okay, but nighttime cloudy weather, spotting ranges aren't going to be that uh, great. And in those conditions, the threat of torpedoes goes up. That may be why the AI didn't like this matchup. And it is entirely possible that we will sail, you know, it says smoke to the northeast. We are heading north. Oh, no. He just slowed to X5, so he spotted us already. Oh my goodness. He probably has torps. I am going to start maneuvering now, since we can't even tell if he does or not. Ow! Oh, yep. <laughs> Spotted torps were already in the water. <laughs> well, the AI may have been right here. Let's slow down and see what this thing has. Okay, the first Bismarck. 
not quite 10,000 tons. It is slower by well, a good bit, actually. It's 22.4 knots. Ours is 27. Nine inch guns. So higher caliber than ours. We have eight inch. Uh, it's got a lot of five inch and four inch guns too. 12 5 inch, 4 4 inch, and 6 2 inch, which is not a big deal for us. And Two torpedo tubes, interestingly, not amidships, firing broadside, but bow and stern. So he fired that torpedo at us out of his bow. It's kind of an unusual setup. And his torps are fast with standard ammo. Fast should mean four knot, yeah, or four kilometer range. Okay. Seven point two inch main belt. It's fairly it's fairly robust for a nineteen ten heavy cruiser or armored cruiser. not have torpedoes of any type. However, I think his are going to be relatively easy to spot and avoid. You can only fire one at a time, pointed right out of the bow or stern. Just going to stay away from his bow there. Low pin chance, switching to HE. get more guns to bear, but I don't really want to cut across his bow to do it. I'm going all the way back around this way. I want to keep it in a decent amount of range so he doesn't turn and pop one of those torpedoes into me point blank. This range, I think we can uh, avoid them. Okay. I'd like to think that our 8 inch rate of fire will make up for its higher caliber. I don't see any particular evidence that that is occurring. <laughs>
part of the problem is that uh, aft belt armor tends to be typically lighter than four belt armor. Most of my shots are into the mid and forward. Most of his shots are into my aft. Plus the fact he's got a higher caliber anyway. down and disengage. The trajectory of this battle is not good. I need a 9 inch arm. I'm giving up a knot or two for speed. Also got more rounds. You know, I've got standard ammo. You've got increased ammo. <laughs> Which notion should make it more prone to higher risk for a flash fire if you could ever get a penetrating in the war. Thank you. 
No, I meant to go auto. Not. You can't designate uh, HE for secondaries and AP for mains. There are different ammo types for mains and secondaries. If you, if you select HE, everything will fire HE. If you select AP, everything will fire AP. What I would prefer is for the big guns to shoot AP and the secondaries to continue shooting HE. In other similar type of games, you can do that. Uh, that's not an option here. My hope is that using automatic, choose automatically, meaning by AI, depending on the gun in the market. My hope is that it auto is doing that. I don't know that it is. So at this point, I'm hoping that I pop a lucky penetrating shot, attention enough that he slows down to slower than me and I can slowly disengage. Not terribly optimistic that that's going to happen. good shots, but clearly the balance of damage here is in his favor. And I've slowed him down a little bit, but he's slowing me down at, at least as much or a greater rate. Seventy-four hits. Sixty-seven of them have been ricochets. This is working. For all H H E. Looks like we're opening business. For some reason, he has slowed down. On that. It's because he took some flooding. Okay, good. That's what we're going for. out some of our flood. Remember, we were down to something like 60% flotation. Which is still showing 60% up here, but it's higher than that, so I don't know which number to believe. In any case, this flotation is higher than it was. Which means, at the moment at least, we're a little bit faster. But he's back up to 17%. Because he's pumped his out, he's pumped his water out too. Where he can. If a compartment is completely destroyed, meaning a red outline, and it fills up with water, can't pump that out. It's there for the rest of the battle. But if a green or yellow or just plain gray, undamaged compartment fills up with water. That can be pumped out. And the and the speed with which it gets pumped out uh, is uh, determined or is affected rather by your crew skill. At green, uh, a 
we've got negative 4% damage control, which is less of a nerf than we had at Condemned. And then at Trained and Regular and Seasoned and Veteran, there will be an increasing buff to damage control, which is how fast you get rid of flooding and how fast you get out fire. flooding on him. <laughs> He's kind of maintaining speed with us right now, which is not good news. 74% structure. We're at 59% structure. So if our aft 8-inch turret doesn't get knocked out, that good. It really is done. It hasn't lost speed, but we've opened a little bit. I guess because he was trying to get both turrets up there, I suppose. I just want to keep my stern pointed straight at him. These two compartments are already permanently flooded. Oh, that's not good. And if he causes a compartment to flood that's already flooded, no big deal. But he got an additional compartment here. However, it's yellow. We may be able to pump this out. Progressive flooding. This compartment starting to flood. Oh, see? It's going back down now. Got on it. And also, if he hits this red compartment, this red compartment, you know, he can't do any more damage to an already fully damaged compartment. You know, I don't want him hitting all this up in here but for flooding reasons, and that'll further erode the structure. Keep hitting the stern, you can't do any more to it. I know this isn't fascinating. I've got the time compression as fast as it will go.
gun is taking some damage. It's still green. Six kilometer distance. I don't remember the number at which we first spotted, but it being nighttime and cloudy. We may not be that far away from losing uh, visibility. He wasn't that much closer than this when we first spotted him. However, we're a bigger ship, we have a bigger target signature, which means when we lose sight of him, doesn't mean he will immediately lose sight of us. He's continuing to still take fire. Two tenths of a knot faster than us now. Not any more optimistic than uh, before about winning this, but I'm getting a lot more optimistic that Europa is not going to sink. Europa, I guess. Not Europa. Two kilometers. I'm trying to get a lucky penetration to knock him into him. That appears unlikely. sweating again. Mm. 
Mm, 245 hits to his five. He's basically hit us twice as many times with a higher caliber gun and then twice as much damage. See there are eight inches have a seven point seven percent chance to hit. His nine inches have a nine percent chance to hit. And he's still got more ammo than I do too. I need an answer to this class. He's further away now than when we first spotted him. I'd be happy to disappear off into the night now. Anytime. There we go. A little bit of damage from the HE. Started a fire. Department's been pumped out again. Back to our same flotation. Okay. So there we go. We've lost sight of him. He can still see us. Okay, enough the time for pressure now. Cause us to lose speed though. And the boys put the fire out. Nice job, lads. Here we go. Far enough away we can end the battle, and I'm happy to do so. Alright. Defeat, mainly because he did a little bit more damage on us. And we are a higher tonnage ship than we did to him. No ships sunk, both ships. Medium damage, it looks like. Yellow. He did lose a few more crew than us. It's probably because I was, at least some of the time, using a lot of HE. Whereas he was probably firing more armor piercing. <clears throat> I 
almost identical main gun accuracy. However, um, so many of my blocks and ricochets. Yeah. Oh, medium to me, light to him. Ah. Okay. Well, um, so our armored cruiser does not stand up to the German armored cruiser one for one. And that is partially because of torpedoes, but mainly because it's just, hey, nine inch versus eight inch. Normally, now if I had a player designed eight inch gun ship, it would be much better because my accuracy would be so much higher from the pitch and roll and zero uh, weight imbalance and making sure that we had the best possible towers and range finders and all that. So a player designed eight inch armored cruiser, that could have been very, very different. We didn't have any of that. It was just straight up eight versus nine in auto generated ships and well, you know, predictable result. So we're going to have to go to our shipyards and say, hey, give me a nine-inch nine cruiser, guys. That will be something we do in another episode.